Good morning. morning. Y'all must feel like I do this morning. Good morning. morning. Happy New Year. (laughs) It is good to see that uh, that at least some of us have survived the uh, the holidays and are gathered here. It's uh, this is a good way to start a new year. You may notice that that I'm not. Sherry, we we look a lot alike, but uh, we get confused. Uh, but um, uh, brother Eddie uh, is uh, has a Sunday off. He's he's well, so um, he's just uh, every now and then we need to let him have a Sunday off, and and this was it. He's moving to a new a new house. Uh, the chaos of Christmas wasn't enough for him, so. He decided they would move during this time. So you may want to remember him in prayer. Um, at this point, I would like to call your attention to the announcements that are, are in the bulletin with the start of a new year. A lot of things are resuming. Uh, the abiding small group that meets at Carlana Lane's house on Tuesdays from 8.30 to 9.30 will begin on, on this Tuesday. And, uh, and all are invited to attend. It's a Bible study. Um, if you can, uh, you would love that. Uh, the joys, uh, the seniors, are uh, starting up on Thursday. Um, their speaker this Thursday will be Raymond Brown. I don't know if you realize it or not, but um, as, a, as a young attorney, he clerked uh, with the Supreme Court, the National Supreme Court, and um, he has an insight with um, with the uh, interpretations that they their their rulings that they roll out, and so he's going to be giving us a um, uh, an update on the on the more recent ones, and that's always um, very enlightening. Um, grief share and divorce care. Start January 21st. If you know of someone uh, that could ben- benefit from these, please let them know. Um, there's a ladies' retreat planned for January 23rd, 24th. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Please check that out. See Sherry if you can make it. Um, on a missions note, we have we have two things uh, regarding missions. One has to do with Robert Serenkoff who is uh, the pastor of our connecting congregation in Estonia. And we provide a portion of his salary, and it is time for us to do that. So um, if you are so inclined, that would be very much appreciated because uh, lives are being changed in that corner of the world. The second announcement comes from Dee Boring. So Dee, I would call you up at this time. Good morning. Uh, Well, we are working really hard on our Nicaragua trip, which is coming up in May. Um, I would like to have a really, really, really short meeting right up here in the front just as soon as church is over if you think you are the least bit interested in going. We have deadlines coming up for um, locking in our rate on our airline tickets, so we need to get that taken care of. it, I'm getting excited about it. We've got about eight people lined up so far. Um, we need at least 12, um, and then we're, so we're just hanging in there. If y'all will just let us know if you're interested in going, we certainly would appreciate it. Right up here, right after church. So we'll turn the service over to Sherry for our opening prayer. Father, 
Father, we pause in your presence. Thank you that you are with us as we have come to worship you. Lord, we rejoice in lifting up your name to calling on Jesus. Lord, may your Holy Spirit fill us up as we come together to worship you. For it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning again. We're in the season now of Epiphany, although officially not until January 6th, but we're celebrating it a little early today on January 3rd. We've been through Advent, we've been through Christmas and Christmas time, and from now until, uh, not Lent, but until Ash Wednesday, which starts Lent, it's just another season of joy. The theme of Epiphany is uh, threefold. One is celebrate light, the light of God in our lives, the light of Jesus, God incarnate, being the light of the world, and the light of the star of Bethlehem that led the faithful and the shepherds to find the Jesus, uh, baby Jesus, in his manger. We celebrate the final, also, the final act of the incarnation, the birth story, which is when the wise men, the king, the magi, came, uh, maybe several years later, we don't really know for sure, but came to find the child um, and to bow down and worship and give him gifts of frankincense, gold, and myrrh, very, very valuable gifts in those days. We also celebrate Jesus' baptism during this time, and it is a time of joy. So our joy that we have felt and have thought about and talked about during the last, uh, the last five weeks, it still continues, just with a very slightly different emphasis. So we're going to sing the whole story of We Three Kings, a very familiar carol, and I invite you to sing it with joy in your hearts because it's about a wonderful thing. It's about the continued benefit of the incarnation of our Lord at Christmas time. Would you stand, please? And let's join our voices together.
conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Thank you, choir, for that beautiful song, Worship. Children, come on down and meet with Miss Christina. Nothing. They must know they go back to school this week. You worn out? You had a busy few weeks off from school? Have you ever lost anything? Set it down somewhere and don't remember where you put it? I know, me too. You lost your remote? Your remote to, oh, to the TV. <gasps> oh, a year? Oh. See, I lose things all the time. It just happens. I set it down, I'm going to come back, and then I can't remember what, even what room I was in. Well, I was in Walmart the other day, and it was before Christmas, and Walmart's crazy on a good day, but at Christmas, it was just insane. And I had Austin and Wyatt with me, and they were looking at a video game or something, and I'm looking at my list, and I just wasn't thinking. I just took off the next place, and uh, I turned around, and there was no Austin and Wyatt. So I turned around and I retraced my steps looking for them. And of course, they're off looking for me. I finally had to have them paged. And by that time, I was frantic, uh, imagining all these horrible things. And when I finally had them, I was just like, where were you? Where have you been? And they were like, hey, we didn't move. You're the one. And for the rest of the day, I felt like the worst parent ever. How do you go off and leave your kids? I mean, really? Well, the next morning, I got my devotion out and my Bible out. I read a story that made me feel so much better. I am not the only parent that's ever gone off and left their child. Do you know who else went off and left? Yes, Mary and Joseph went off and left Jesus. They had gone to Jerusalem for the Feast of the Passover. They went every year. They went in a big group of friends and family. And Jesus was 12. And they all took off. They were headed back home. And they'd been traveling for a day when they decided to stop. And Mary and Joseph, they weren't worried that Jesus wasn't with them. They figured, you know, he's off back behind them with his friends. But when they stopped, they started looking for him. And they couldn't find him anywhere. And they were getting worried. So they turned around and they retraced their steps. They headed back to Jerusalem. It took them three days to find Jesus. When they finally found him, he was in the temple. And he was sitting there with all the teachers, and he was listening to them, and he was asking questions. And then Mary went up to him, and she's like, what were you thinking? We were worried sick. We've been looking everywhere for you. And he looked at him, and he said, well, why were you looking for me? You knew where I was. I was in my father's house. That's where I should be. You know, even at the age of 12, Jesus already knew that where he should be was in the temple. And that that's his father's house. And that's where he went to learn to find God. And it got me to thinking, how many times do we lose Jesus as we go through our day-to-day -day activities? You know, we've got school, you've got sports, you've got dance, you've got lots of homework. How many times do we just get so busy that we lose Jesus? But we know where to find him, don't we? Right here in God's house. It's a house of love, a house of worship, a house of fellowship, a house of peace and security. So when we feel lost, when we're looking for Jesus, we just come right here, don't we? Will you bow your heads? Dear Father, we have come into your house today to worship you. Help us to remember that there is no better place for your children to be than in your house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to go over for children's church. You want to go with me?
morning. <laughs> now is our first opportunity to show our gratitude for what Jesus did. Coming down from heaven, down to one of the worst places to live on earth at that time, in Palestine. Can you imagine that? So let's show our gratitude to him as the ushers come forward to receive our offerings and tithes.
We um, come now this morning to our time of prayer, congregational prayer, and I call your attention to the names of those that are in the bulletin um, that are depending on us to pray. Uh, you are such a praying church. I, I love that about you. And um, these names have been called in. In addition to those that are listed there, uh, there are a few more, more recent. Uh, Jane Flanagan uh, took a fall and is back in the hospital um, as of yesterday. And Miss Ruth Ramsey, who was able to join us last Sunday, um, has taken a hard fall, I understand, and um, has asked us to remember her as well. In addition to that, um, I would like for you at this time to think of someone you would like to start the new year off praying for. Let that name settle in your mind. And as I count down three, two, one in the tradition of the new year, would you speak their name out loud when I get to one? You ready? You have a name? Three, two, one. <laughs> Good job. That was excellent. Let us continue to pray. Lord God, how we thank you and we praise you this morning for who you are. You are our mighty God, our eternal Father, our wonderful Counselor, and our Prince of Peace. Lord, there is truly none like you. And yet, you are mindful of us, and you hear our every prayer. You heard every name that was mentioned just now. You know their need. We thank you in advance for the answer that will surely come. When we consider those we know who are standing in the need of prayer, Lord, we confess that we are there as well. Lord, we are really good sometimes of making a mess of things. Forgive us, we pray. As we stand on the threshold of this brand new year, we ask that you would guide us through every mountaintop experience and every bumpy road that we will face in 2016 so that through it all, we will come to love you more and serve you better. Thank you also for your kindness, Lord, that draws us here today on this Epiphany Sunday when we celebrate Jesus as the light of the world. Like our ancestors, we who live in darkness have seen a great light, and that light has a name, Jesus. Hear now the prayer he taught us to pray as we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There's two things I'm feeling. One, I've just come up in the world. <laughs> Paul has uh, put a platform here for me to stand, otherwise I would be uh, looking over the podium. Uh, the other is, I know exactly how Christina felt when she lost uh, her children. I thought I lost my sermon notes. Now that's a scary thing. <laughs> but they were right where I'd put them, I just didn't remember. 
Well, it is 2016. It's a fresh new start. It's kind of like for me growing up in Wisconsin, looking over a meadow of a fresh fallen snow, just so clean and pristine. And then there's tracks that start and go different directions. The, the thing I wonder about is what track will I make in this new year? You've probably already made resolutions. I know in my house I've been asked several times, what is your New Year's resolution? Uh, or maybe you're one of those that resolves to not make any resolutions. But I would say for most of us, uh, we resolve to be better. To be better as a father or a mother to be better as a teen toward my parents, to be better employee, or to be a better Christian. Most of us resolve to be better in some way. And this year as we begin, it's a progress for each of us. I'd like to read uh, in your hearing uh, from Philippians, it's the verse I look to every new year to start me on the journey. This is Paul's writing to the church at Philippi. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess the, that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brethren or sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking toward what, what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. That's found in Philippians 3, 12 through 16. One thing that Paul likens our spiritual journey to is a race. And in order to race, you have to want to race. Uh, you can choose to stand on the sidelines or you can choose to get involved. To, 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 uh, for your heart to desire uh, for the things of God. Another essential Paul alludes to is running the race is con concentration. In verse 13, he says, but I do concentrate on this, the one thing. Winners in a race are winners because they concentrate and specialize and don't let other things distract them. And that's essential in our spiritual growth. Sometimes doing too many things and spreading ourselves thin kills our effectiveness in one in the one thing. So don't major on the minors. Keep the main thing the main thing. Paul expressed a direction. We need to let go of the things that are hindering us to free us to go forward. He said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the upward call of God. There's one sure thing. We can make our lives miserable if we live our life looking back, looking over our shoulder, uh, looking in the review mirror. 
it's certainly healthy to examine our lives and to take note, but we don't let the past hinder us from our present running. We need to let it go. If you want to have a great new year, then think about what God has in store for you this year. Paul was determined, not that I've already attained or I'm already perfect, but I press on. The word press means to put every ounce of effort and energy into something. In this case, your Christian walk. I wonder what would happen in 2016 if we put as much dedication into our spiritual life as we do into our hobbies. What would your spiritual life look like? The fifth element of the race is to participate. Uh, we're in this together. We don't need to sit on the sidelines. We need to come together and uh, walk by the same rule, to have the same mind in Jesus Christ. Paul repeated the words, we and us. He wanted to make the point that when you've got runners all around you, when you've got your congregation all around you, there will be times when you will face discouragement and you'll need the encouragement of others. A wonderful place to connect is certainly in our worship time and in our small groups that we encourage for you to be a part of. So we're thinking of progress, not perfection. Focus on the future, not the past. And think together, not alone. The most important thing is to finish the race. It's a story, there's a story about a mountain climber who died and was buried at the base of the Alps. And on his gravestone were his name, the date of his birth and his death, and a simple three-word epitaph. He died climbing. What a great thing to say of a mountain climber. He died climbing in the very pursuit that was his life. It would be a great thing for us to have on ours that we died climbing, going upward and onward. We don't know when the finish line will come, but God put you on this earth for a purpose, to finish your race with joy. So focus on what he has for you this new year. Expect great things from God. Concentrate on the one thing, and you'll find that the Christian life is the most amazing race that anyone could ever run. Let us start the new year with an attitude of growing in Christ. Now for the second sermon. I just wanted to share that as a, as a, a focus for us to um, rely on for the new year. Philippians 3, 12 through 16. Paul mentioned that this is Epiphany Sunday. It is a season to focus on the light of Christ, to the joy that he brings. And uh, Epiphany, we often think of those aha moments when we realize uh, something new. Something has dawned upon us. God wants to reveal new insights to us. Let's visit another journey. It's the journey that the Magi took from Matthew uh, 2, 1 through 12. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, wise men 
or Magi, from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking this, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply distressed and disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come out from you who will be the shepherd for my people, Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the Magi, the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for this child. And when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them right to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. They were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's look at the participants in our narrative this morning. We certainly see King Herod, who is ruling over Judea. He was not a good king, as we note. The Magi and the wise men. Did you know there's nothing in Scripture that alludes to three wise men? However, they did bring three gifts. And they were significant and appropriate for, the, for Jesus. The wise men came with res resolute and confidence, for they asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. They made it known what he was about, what they were about. The wise men had one desire, to search and find the baby Jesus. Oh, they had a few bumps. Herod secretly conniving to destroy this baby who he, who he felt threatened by. The wise men continued their journey and they were not disappointed. They saw the child, and their first response was to worship, was to experience joy. Now, going on with the part participants of this narrative and this journey, Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus. I'm always amazed at the faith of Joseph and his obedience to God's will and God's leading. Likewise, the wise men obeyed and followed God's will in going home another way. There's things we can learn from this encounter. First, the, the Magi followed the light, the light that was given to them. They determined to find the king of the Jews. Are we determined to find Jesus in new ways? To learn from his word? God will light the path before us. 
if we but seek him. One of the light beams comes from Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He continues to lead the lives who seek to follow him. Second, we can learn that the Magi's first response was to bow down and worship. They were overjoyed in his presence. It's through worship, humbling ourselves before God, praying and reading God's word, that we are given mercy and grace to equip us for the journey. We are not alone. Hebrews 4.16 reads, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And they returned home, it says, to share their experiences with others. God wants our willingness to share his message. His message of hope and love with others here at home and abroad. Earl challenged us last Sunday to share in the work and ministry of Robert Sharonkoff. Mission teams are now being put together for Nicaragua and for Estonia. Community of Hope seeks to meet needs of those who need help. Two of our Sunday school classes serve, cook and serve at Our Daily Bread on a regular basis. The gospel of the good news must be heard beyond the walls of our church building. We are to share God's love both by word and by deed with those he brings into our life or that he brings across your path. There's so many ways to get involved in making the good news of Jesus Christ go around the world. Where will your journey take you this year? Do you have plans to grow closer to him? Are you searching to follow him more clearly? Coming up, our ladies, both youth and adults have the opportunity to take time for a day apart on January 23rd. This will be a time of refreshment and reviving. It's just one way to find strength for the journey. So to put it all together, Follow the light of God's word and the leading of his Holy Spirit to worship Jesus. And then make it your aim to share his love with others. Amen. Our closing hymn picks up on the theme of the new year. It's number 698 in your hymnal, God of the Ages, and it celebrates how God has been with his people over thousands of years and how he is still with us today. Would you rise, please? And we will sing all four verses of God of the Ages.
follow the light and trust him for the new things he wants to show you in this new year. Let us join hands as we sing peace to one another. Thank you.